The time, January 1964. The scene, the trans sky. A slice of South Africa larger than Switzerland, twice the size of Israel. Itself just one of eight emerging black states, so-called Bantu Stans, to be shaped into a single South African Commonwealth. George Waite's family has farmed in the trans sky for four generations. Two weeks ago, this territory was fashioned for self-government under the apartheid policy. Now, George must acknowledge a new order. The time, April 1833. Black faces white in southern Africa. Another encounter at another point on a shifting frontier. This was the only region of Africa where the two races moved into practically empty territory. Where black and white could share the right to be called African. Boers, mainly of Dutch, French and German origin, who had settled in the Cape in the 17th century, were moving north in search of new land. While the southerly black nations, or Bantu as they are known, were shifting from their homes in Central Africa. In 1910, the British recognized the respective claims of the races. The Bantu nations, as different from each other as Greek and German, Swede and Pole, were granted the separate territories they'd settled. The homelands of the Betuana, the Swazi and Basutu became British protectorates, while the lands of the smaller Bantu groups were placed under South African guardianship. And so it was that 46% of British South Africa, including the pick of the country's fertile land in the small high rainfall strip, were set aside for the Bantu. The frontiers were drawn and the architects of territorial apartheid returned to Whitehall. <laughs> <laughs> 